The Repose skill on the Rapier Tree is one of the best abilities in the game, offering versatility in both attack and defense. In this video, I'll go over my build, and more importantly, an all-encompassing guide on how to play it. I've spent over 3,000 hours playing this build alone, so I've got a lot to get into. Before I start, this will be a PvE-focused guide, but 90% of what I talk about can be applied to PvP as well. If you'd like to skip around to the part you're more interested in, feel free to check the timestamps shown here. So before I really get into this guide, I want to talk about where this build excels and where it might fall short. The Repost Evade build is not easy to play and requires you to really learn attack patterns to see its full benefit. Therefore, I'm going to give this build a 4.5 star difficulty to play. This build is S tier on damage, just falling short of the Bleed Rapier build. However, in practice, this can be just as deadly due to how much you can stay within fights with Repost and Evade. Next, because we are using Evade and Repost with this build, your escape options are unbeatable. This will give you an advantage if you ever steal aggro from a tank or simply want to solo bosses. This last one is more of my own opinion, but I think a lot of players who have played this build will agree it's one of the most satisfying builds you can ever play, especially at a top level when you can really use your abilities back to back. Next, let's go over the cons of this build. The Rapier struggles at the mid-range since we're not using the traditional gap closer with F and F. The Rapier also has minimal CC so you will have to rely on your secondary for that and understand when to use the Rapier and when to use your secondary. Finally, due to the nature of some of the mechanics I will get into later, this build isn't easy to play, especially at a top level, and it has a steep learning curve. However, if you're at all interested in becoming a parry god, I encourage you to stick with it and you will eventually see improvement. Good luck, and let's get right into the guide. This video will be separated into two parts, beginner tips and advanced tips. If you already have some general understanding of the rapier, I suggest you go to the advanced section. If you're just starting out in New World, then I'll get you up to speed on a few things now. Tip number one, evade is a dodge. This might seem basic, and it kind of is, but what you must understand is to use evade in place of a dodge. I recommend you practice it out against the enemy and really try to understand how this ability functions. Tip number two, repost is a dodge. Similar situation here, but the key idea is to use these two abilities in place of a dodge. The more you can build up that habit, the greater your reward will be in the long term. Tip number three, flurry is a potion. When you eventually get to max level, you will need to get this perk, Leeching Flurry. This perk allows you to gain health whenever you use Flurry. The takeaway here is that sometimes being aggressive when you're low on health is better than backing away and drinking a potion. Tip number four, learn attack patterns. If you want to push this build to its absolute limits, you must learn attack patterns. Due to how much benefit you get from landing a repost, it's important to know when to actually repost. Consistency is key here. Tip number five, skill is more important than your build. When you're first starting out, you may get discouraged and think your gear just isn't quite there and blame it on that. Believe me, this isn't an easy build to play and the only the dedicated players will push it as far as it can go. As the age old saying goes, skill issue. Practice the four tips I listed before this and then you can focus on your gear. Tip number six, cooldown reduction. The rapier has a lot of cooldown reduction whenever you attack an enemy. This will allow you to use your abilities very often. Tip number seven, combo game. Once you have a decent grasp on your abilities, practice some simple combos. I'll go into further detail in the advanced section, but for now, try this simple combo. Repost, evade, flurry. This concludes the beginner section. Remember, practice makes perfect. Starting off the advanced section, if there's anything you should practice extensively, it's evade cancelling. The last combo I mentioned in the beginner section, you might have noticed how you can cancel the end lag of repost with evade and immediately act out of it. This gives you a significant advantage as well as having iframes when you otherwise wouldn't. So how does this tech work? The core idea is to get the timing down so you're pressing evade just as repost connects with the enemy. This will take some time to build up the muscle memory. 
The reason this is so important is because repost naturally has a period of time after the animation ends when you are vulnerable and cannot act. So if another enemy from behind you, for example, begins an attack, you cannot avoid it unless you evade cancel. For the second advanced tip, repost is tied to evade. Because of how important evade cancelling is, you want to make sure whenever you go for a repost, evade is off cooldown. If not, you're putting yourself in a vulnerable position. In a few situations, evade cancelling is actually a requirement if you plan on not getting hit. The last boss, the Tempest Heart for example, has a 2 attack chain that must be evade cancelled. The best defense is a good offense. If there's any phrase that describes this build, it's that. Don't be afraid to put yourself in a dangerous position and rely on your fast cooldown reduction to continuously repost, evade, and flurry your way through the fight. It's very rare that I actually back off to drink a potion since flurry is such a strong sustain. My fourth tip is all about tightening up your combo game. As you get better, you will start to notice just how fast you can actually play this build. Remember, the more aggressive you are, the faster your abilities will come off cooldown. As you reach this point, you will enter a sort of flow state and be able to pull off some otherwise impossible solo boss kills at record speed. Another great tip is to utilize Skewer as a movement ability. In what you probably noticed in the last 20 seconds of gameplay, I've used Skewer to remove myself from a deadly attack. This maintains my stamina and allows me to get right back into the fight once your move is finished. One thing that will become very important when you start to solo bosses is to utilize Evade's benefit of generating stamina when used in replace of a dodge. This can help by a lot if you are ever near being stamina drained. Another great tip is to notice what abilities you can sustain yourself through. This goes along with my previous tip in the beginner section about understanding attack patterns. In the gameplay you're watching now, you can see how I prioritize utilizing Flurry in situations where I can get away with it, and use repost, evade, or dodge when I cannot. Never stop attacking. This next tip will not truly make sense until you can really master certain attack patterns. Whenever you light attack, you will deal damage, lower cooldowns, and gain stamina thanks to the controlled breathing passive. Remember not to stress or panic. Evade and Repost are able to be used during any animation. So far all I've talked about is applicable when playing solo. Let's switch the focus to how this build functions while in a group. The first main point I want to make is that your role is to be a raw damage dealer. This means you should be using the rapier 90% of the time and only swap to the spear for CC or debuffs. Make sure to play off your teammates. If someone drops a grab well, prioritize a sweep first, then start blasting with rapier. This will give you and your entire team extra time as well as applying potential damage boosts for crowd control enemies. This concludes the advanced section. Let's get into my actual gear and how I plan to set up for New World Eternum. Alright, so looking at the rapier tree itself, we're going to be running obviously the three abilities, Evade, Repost, and Flurry. And we're going to pick up a few perks here. I'll kind of explain briefly some of the more important ones. Uh, so for example, Controlled Breathing, this will give you three stamina on any hit. This can apply with the Flurry ability as well, so you can generate a ton of stamina if you ever are um, low on stamina, you know, just attacking will generate stamina for you, which is pretty strong. And then we also have our three or four perks that will lower cooldowns. So one of those is Refreshing Strikes, which reduces all rapier cooldowns by 1% on any hit, max five reductions per attack. So, you know, if you hit five enemies, you, you can't hit six, more than five, and uh, it's not going to count. But realistically, with all of these other benefits, if you're hitting two enemies, you'll have... Uh, almost max cooldown reduction so uh yeah this one for sure and then uh fleeting strikes which is each hit of flurry reduces its cooldown by five percent and again hitting multiple enemies this can stack twice so if we hit all hits of flurry that's going to be 25 percent and if you hit two enemies it's 50 percent uh so you can reduce flurry's cooldown by 50 percent if you hit 
uh, two enemies. And this also pairs with f refreshing strikes. And also red curtains, so if you get backstabs or critical hits, I guess, um, you're going to reduce its all cooldowns by 5%. And again, Flurry can uh, benefit from this. So if you hit 5 attacks with Flurry, it's going to be another 25% reduction. And this can stack against multiple enemies, so that's another 50%. So that's why if you hit two enemies with Flurry, all five hits connect. This is an instant cooldown, and you can just spam it again and again and again. Uh, and then we also have priority, which is whenever you land a repost, all cooldowns get reduced by 20%. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all of the cooldown reduction perks. And you'll notice, you know, if you try this build out, you'll see just how quickly your abilities come off of cooldown. And if you get into kind of like the flow state of this build, you can really just use your abilities whenever you want to, as long as you're, you're playing it aggressively, because that's really what it comes down to. Um, swiftness, of course, we covered, or I guess I will cover why this is important. Um, generating haste, this applies to our, um, our artifact that we're going to be talking about soon. And uh, perfectionist, you deal extra damage when your health is full. And Light Edge is decent just because you'll you'll notice you'll be attacking with your second and third attack chain in your auto. And um, just having a, a flat 8% damage increase is pretty good. We're going to max out our Evade Tree and then we're going to pick up Momentum. This will give us a 30% increased damage. Next, Light or Heavy Attack after performing an ability. This pairs perfectly with Evade because... Every time you evade, you're going to light attack right after. It's just a good uh, muscle memory to be in. Evade, light attack, evade, light attack. You know, that's the whole idea of evade spamming with this build. So, yeah, this is the uh, entire tree. I'll also cover the spear because this is what my primary... I guess this is not set up correctly. So, we're going to pick up... I'll just redo this here. We want to max out skewer and perforate as well. And um, these are these are pretty good. I mean, some of these you could change, I think. I'm just trying to remember how I set this up. Uh, let's see here. Oh yeah, and then we also want sweep. And do I have one more? Yeah. So I guess our last one we could do strong conditioning, which is gonna give us stamina regeneration. Uh, so yeah, this is a pretty decent setup. You don't really have to be perfect with this setup So feel free to check this tree out and um, play around with it if you want to but for sure I think these three abilities are good. You could theoretically replace sweep with vault kick, but I think sweep just covers more of the um, The flaws that the rapier has which is a lack of CC and especially when you're running in uh, a group with five people Let's say running a mutation sweep is super super important because it can uh, knock down the entire clump and allow you to burn a lot uh, smoother. So that's what I would prefer there. Um, so yeah, that's our secondary. Alright, so for our rapier repost build, we're going to be using a few artifacts. I'll go over those now. Uh, for our armor artifact, we're going to use the winged leather shoes. Now, I used to use the tumbler feet wraps, which are pretty good, but... Um, after looking through artifacts and really trying to understand what the best choice is, I really think that the wing leather shoes are the most optimal choice. And the reason is because of this perk right here, which allows you to get basically a 10% bonus damage almost all the time. I mean, 99% of the time you will have this buff. And the reason is because if you look at the, uh, the rapier, um, there is a perk called Swiftness where you gain 3% haste for 4 seconds on rapier hits and it can stack up to 5 times. So theoretically, you know, you're going to have haste 100% yeah, of the time. There's very rare situations where you won't have haste, especially when you're fighting enemies. So that's why this, um, this perk here will have 100% uptime and you'll have a uh, flat 10% bonus damage. For your last perk that you want to put on this, Probably either health or enchanted ward. Um, I would say whatever you think is more uh, beneficial towards you. I'm probably going to put enchanted ward on mine. So, uh, but health would work too. And then for our um, 
jewelry. We're gonna use the Endless Thirst artifact. And um, I really like this one. It's it's not like amazing. It's just kind of a good one to have because you're not gonna be using potions too much when you're using this build because Flurry is such a good sustain. So realistically, the only times you're gonna be popping a potion is when you really, really need to. And then you'll also get a bonus on damage because it'll give you in power if you're not in power capped, which you know sometimes you'll you'll be there because this build does tend to generate a ton of empower but you also gain fortify 20 percent fortify for eight seconds and uh your potions will be stronger so it's all around a good choice i think this is probably the best play for this build and then for our uh weapon artifact uh i'm not going to use the the uh the finisher for the rapier because it really isn't that good for this build so we're going to use venom and Venom is pretty good because it allows you to apply a um, a debuff poison um, with heavy attacks, and this applies to your rapier as well. So you can heavy attack with the rapier and still get this bonus here. Um, so it's pretty good, and also I just think that the Venom is just a, a solid play. And you can put for your third perk, definitely want to put... Um, Enfeebling Skewer on there. Uh, definitely the best perk to put on. Not even a, a question. Any other perks would not be that good. So definitely put Enfeebling Skewer for your final perk there. All right, so that's the artifacts. Let's go over the actual um, gear itself now. Okay, so for our armor, we're gonna want to use a few perks. You can see the ones that are in green are all enchanted wards. So. All of your gear should have Enchanted Ward and Harnessing. And then um, you want to put Health on one piece of armor. It doesn't really matter. And then you want to have at least two of these weapon perks. Leeching Flurry is required. You definitely need to have this one. Uh, in fact, I'll just highlight this yellow just so it's very clear that this is a very important weapon perk to have. You need this one. And then Sun Rear Post is... In my opinion, a good one to have, and if you use Repost a lot, it's definitely gonna, you're definitely gonna notice a difference, just because it generates such a huge rend. I think it's 29% or 29% on weapon, on armor. I think it's 21% or 19% or something like that. And then fortifying perforate, if you're using the spear as a secondary, is a really good choice because um, it'll give you fortify. It can come in handy. It's not required, so you could theoretically replace fortifying perforate with health if you wanted to um, but both would work depending on whether or not you want to uh, yeah I mean honestly you might as well just go with health here I think that's probably just all around the better play um, and that'll allow you to survive a little bit longer and not have to rely on the fortifying perforate so for our weapon perks for our rapier uh, I think this is the best play, which is Rogue, Omni Evade, and Vicious. I think the Life Ring is actually this exact one. So definitely, um, you know, these three perks are really strong together. And um, yeah, I used to run Sun Ring Post on my weapon, but Omni Evade on weapon is just, you're just going to get more overall damage out of this. And you won't have to rely so much on Repost. So I just think it's the better play. And then, like I said, with the spear, you want to run Venom with Infeeling Skewer. Our amulet, amulet you're going to want to run a Element Protection perk. So that could be like fro uh, Frozen Protection, Flame Protection, Nature Protection. It depends on the, uh, the mutation you're running. I guess nowadays with New World Eternum, mutations aren't going to be as big of a deal. Everyone's going to be running the raid. But it's still good to have probably at least one amulet of each. And then for your second and third perk, probably health and the third perk, you can swap this around with whatever you want. I'm just going to say refreshing is a good choice here. And then for our ring, we're going to run the element damage specific perk. And that's when that's where harnessing comes involved. So I should have explained this a little bit better before, but essentially what I mean by harnessing is something like um, lightning harnessing, for example. And uh, this will give you plus 2% lightning damage. And if you apply that four times here, that's gonna be plus 8%. And then if you pair that with even the Mjolnir, 
which is a build that I run, which is Rapier plus the Spark of Mjolnir. This will give you 20% more lightning damage with both weapons. So, just something to note, most of my Rapier builds are attached to uh, elements, and that allows me to get just a little bit more damage. And, uh, yeah, it makes a decent amount of difference, I would say. So, you want to run Harnessing and... Uh, lightning would be good for Ancients, for example, with the Mjolnir. And you'd swap out the Spear, the Venom, for Mjolnir whenever you run a dungeon against um, Ancient enemies. So, for example, like uh, Lazarus. And then for your third, second and third perks for your Ring, you want to run Hardy and Refreshing or Leeching. Hardy is definitely a requirement, so you have uh, more stamina. And then... You could either run Refreshing or Leeching. Leeching is good just for health sustainability, so I would probably recommend one of those. And then for your Earring, obviously we covered that for the Artifact, which is the Endless Thirst. So that's about it for the gear. Alright, and one more thing I forgot to mention would be the gems. So firstly, for our Rapier, uh, we, we want to use a Rune Glass for pretty much all of our gem slots. And the Rapier, if we're going to go off of the... Uh, lightning harnessing for example Then we're gonna want to use the rune glass of electrified topaz and this will convert 50% of damage dealt to lightning and It will also inflict surge which deals 8% lightning damage per second for two seconds and um, That would we would put that on our rapier for our spear or secondary weapon in this case We're gonna be using the mjolnir so this wouldn't apply but for example if we were running something that wasn't lightning harnessing, so maybe like arcane harnessing um, in like uh, corrupt dungeons like Tempest, we would use the spear, and in that case, we would want to use a different rune glass than the one uh, or a different element rune glass than we currently use on the rapier. And a good rule of thumb is nature is always a good choice. Um, and the reason that you're doing this is because you cannot stack uh, these damage over time effects on both weapons. So it's a better choice to just use a different element in your rune glass for your secondary. But again, this isn't like a huge priority, so I wouldn't worry too much about this until you really understand how this build functions, uh, because these are also pricey and stuff. So, and then for our armor, we're gonna be running the rune glass of electrified opal. Again, this only applies for our um, our topaz build, which is lightning harnessing. And the reason we're going to do this is because we'll gain 2% elemental damage absorption, so it's kind of like a gem. And uh, it's definitely weaker than a cut pristine topaz, for example. But the reason this is good is because we're going to gain 2% lightning damage. And this applies uh, four times if we're running it on four of these. I guess the wing leather boots too. Um, so that would be either 8% or 10% extra lightning damage. So pretty good. And that covers the gems. That concludes the video. Please give a like if you found something useful. If you have any questions or further information that you want to add, please leave a comment below. And I'll see you guys in the next video.